group. How are you all? I hope you're keeping well. Thanks for joining me on another ramble. And today I'm starting my walk from the village of Harpole in Northamptonshire. And it's 20 past seven in the morning. It's pitch black outside and very foggy. I did remember my torch, thankfully. I'm hoping to get up a, a rather big hill before sunrise and hopefully get some nice photos from the top. But who knows, it could be very cloudy. Okay, let's go for it. I'm just heading out along this country road and very soon I should be at a regular footpath. No, my luck would be really muddy. That's not too bad, but I kind of expect it in December. And then we're going to head up a hill, unknown hill, and it's 141 metres above sea level. So it's not really a big hill, it's quite small compared to other places I guess I've been to this year. But in Northamptonshire terms, that's, that's what you'd call a big hill. <laughs> degrees it's tropical and I'm roasting I've misjudged the clothing yet again oh, absolutely cooking under these these winter clothes I've overdone it again I don't really need that oh, I'm gonna have to readjust in a minute because it's uh, getting a bit uncomfortable <laughs> really creepy and I've realized there's no actual wiring between those posts and I have a herd of horses walking towards me so I'm going to slowly make my exit I just had a bit of a scary moment with those horses initially when I saw the trig point there was no horses in my sort of vision and once I started faffing about taking photos of the trig point, I saw them emerging out of the fog. And they just stood there looking at me, which was fine, because that's usually what horses tend to do. But then they started galloping towards me at speed, all of them. And I think that's the first time I've ever felt a little bit unsure. Okay, scared. And I moved towards the hedge line because the ground was very uneven and there was lots of big rabbit holes. And I'm kind of thinking horses are probably not going to want to, to walk on that. And I started making my way towards the hedge line and the exit by the stile. And um, yeah, it really got my heart going. And I just turned around and shouted no as loud as I could, raising my arms. And they all scattered and ran off um, back into the fog. It was really quite surreal. And I've come across horses in fields before and they've been absolutely fine, but this was a bit, a bit hairy, if you know what I mean. But yeah, strange, very strange. Lesson learnt there. Raising your hands and shouting does actually work that time. I'm just doing this to make sure there's no horses behind me. <laughs> I'm using my camera as a side mirror. <laughs> what a morning!
behind here. Got Rudolph in the middle. And I reckon we've got Donna and Dasha there. How cute. How was it for you? Whew. It's been a crazy 12 months, hasn't it? Still living with the coronavirus, the pandemic, and everything else that's gone with it. And I'm not gonna lie, it's been really difficult, very tough. The third lockdown for me was the toughest out of all of them. And I can honestly say my mental health and well-being was significantly affected by that. I mean, I even camped in my garden twice. My neighbours must have thought I was crazy. But I was so keen to get out there and try out all my new camping gear. I just couldn't wait any longer. One of my coping strategies for the beginning of 2021 was absorbing myself in the outdoors but a lot of it was done online through YouTube watching some great channels looking at places I've, I've never been to or heard of before building up a list of places that I want to visit finding trails that really appealed to me so thank you YouTube you've done me a, a great service and as I look back some of those channels have been incredibly inspiring and motivational and I've made friends through that. And there really is a, a good connection and a good vibe through the online outdoor community as we share our stories and adventures with each other. I did a lot of my purchasing of camping stuff during lockdown three. I did my very first wild camp in April near Morton Pinckney in Northamptonshire with my friends Julia and Rebecca. Um, I remember it being so cold that the condensation on my Langshan froze and trying to pack it away in the morning was incredibly difficult. And what else did I do this year? I did my very first solo wild camp all by myself. Very proud of that. And uh, I think I was quite nervous, but that's another tick in the box. Yeah, that was a good, good experience. is also the year that I completed my first long distance path through hike, my first proper one. I did the Northamptonshire round 2020 in between lockdowns. I nearly fell over there on sheep shit. Uh, I did Hadrian's Wall from Newcastle all the way across from east to west up to the Irish Sea. And um, I think it's about 84 miles in total, but because my accommodation wasn't near the trail, I did about 100 miles in a week. And I've never done anything like that in my life. And I'm, I'm proud of that, and I own that. And it just goes to show, with a little bit of thought, a bit of training, and some good friends around you, these things can be possible. And I want to do more national trails. I'd love to do the Ridgeway. I'd love to do the Cleveland Way or the West Highland Way or coast to coast. I mean, there's so many long distance paths out there. Um, really am spoiled for choice. So next year, hopefully I'll get to do another one over the duration of a week. And now that I've done Hadrian's Wall, I know that I can, I can do similar things. Yeah. Yeah, that's a big tick in the box, that one. Twenty twenty one is also the year that I quit my job. I left my job of thirteen years in August. I worked for a large mental health charity, and for most of my time there, I worked in learning and development. And now I'm a full time student, giving off grants, which does present quite a lot of challenges but I know that what I'm doing will bear good fruit in the end and um, studying full time it's, it's really an enjoyable experience I love the subject that I'm learning um, I'm doing a degree 
BA in, in theology at the moment and I'm being sponsored by my local diocese so I'm in a very, very privileged position and I'm very grateful for it. And if you're wondering what all that means, in simple terms, I'm training to be a vicar. So yeah, that's it. One day I'll be known as Reverend Rambling Rachel. <laughs> I'll have to change my YouTube logo, won't I? But it's a long old process. It's going to take about six years in total. So I've got three years as a student, and then another three years as a curate, and then hopefully I'll be licensed and be able to get a job as a vicar somewhere. So that's a yeah, a big turning point this year, and a good one. me the main Anglican church in Harpole. Let's have a little look inside. concludes my pre-Christmas ramble. Thank you for joining me. Today I clocked up 5.8 miles which isn't too bad at all. Very enjoyable walk out here in the beautiful county of Northamptonshire. Apart from the horses in the mist experience it was all really really good and I want to wish you all a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year and all the best for 2022. Look after yourselves, be kind to each other and enjoy the festive period. And if you're watching this video after Christmas, then I hope you had a good one. And make sure you make time to get out into the countryside, enjoy nature, and keep exploring those green spaces. Take care, rock up, and ramble.